says in Psalms 121, Psalms 121, verse 1 and 2, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I want to tell you, my dear brother and sister, that you have help from the Lord this morning. Do not despair. Do not give up. Do not get depressed. Your help is from the Lord. And this morning we want to lift up our voices, lift up your hearts, lift up your hands and let your faith and let your heart be on the Lord this morning because he is your help. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We want to honor you and to glorify your holy name. Thank you for the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. And at this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you alone are God to the glory of God the Father. Thank you, Lord, this morning that you have given us the privilege and the avenue of prayer. And that, Lord, as we come to you this morning, we recognize you as Lord above all. That every other thing is, be, 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 is under you, O oh Father, and you are above it all. The, thank you this morning that you are God of our nation. You are God of our families. You are God of the nations of the earth. That, Lord, we may find no other help in any other place apart from you, O oh God. So, Father, Lord, in, for our families this morning, we want to raise them up before you. We want to thank you, Lord, that you have kept us this far, O oh Father. We pray, O oh Father, for every person, every family member, every loved one, who is in sickness, who is in pain this morning. And we command the word of the Lord. Your word says that you sent your word and healed them. We command healing in their bodies. We command healing in their minds. We command healing in their relationships. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we command your word, O oh God. And we pray, O oh Father, that let your healing virtue touch them. Those who are in in hospital beds, oh God, those who are in different kinds of pain, oh God Almighty, those who are suffering from cancer, those who are suffering from diabetes, those who are suffering from migraines and heart conditions and every kind of infirmity, hear ye the word of the Lord this morning. We declare that you are healed this morning. We declare that hope is coming this morning. We declare that you're being lifted up and your bodies are receiving strength this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we thank you that as your word comes forth, our faith is being lifted. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every obstacle is turning into an opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and right now we take charge of the atmosphere in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ, we take charge of the atmosphere and we declare that this is the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit, that no other name shall be lifted apart from your name, that no other thing shall be lifted apart from you, O God. We you cast down everything that raises itself against your knowledge, O oh God. And we declare Holy Spirit of God is moving to and fro, touching the lives of many, touching the lives of the young and the old, and de bringing healing and deliverance and breakthrough in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for victory this morning. We declare victory even as your word comes forth. We declare power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because you are healing many. You are delivering them. We declare that this is the day of salvation, oh God. That, Father, as someone hears your word this morning, they will open up their hearts to you. And their lives are going to be changed. There is going to be transformation this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord, because you are our helper. We look unto you only, oh God. The systems of the world may may fail but lord you never fail you never sleep nor slumber and that is why we worship you this morning that is why we adore you as lord and god we bless your holy name father lord have your way oh god be lifted up oh lord be magnified for there is none else like you and this we pray trusting and believing in jesus mighty name come on somebody shout amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah hallelujah
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for those who are coming live. Thank you so much. What a wonderful time of prayer and expectation from God. Thank you for all those who have come live. I want to encourage you to share the link to as many people. Somebody send them a text. Tell them we are on right now. We are just about to praise and to worship our God. And I want to encourage you to participate from wherever you are. You can participate in praise. You can participate in worship. There is no distance with God. And there is no God. We are one family from wherever you are. Well, it is that time to worship and to praise our God from wherever you are. Lift up your voices together with us. Lift up your hands together with us. It is time to lift up our worship and our praise to our God. Thank you even as you join us in this moment of worshiping our God.
your own words, in your own words, why don't you just worship God? Just lift up, exhort Him, magnify Him, glorify Him. He's worthy of all the praise, He's worthy of all the honor. Lift up your hands to Him, lift up your hearts to Him. We worship, Father God, we worship You. We exalt You, we magnify You. You have done as well, You have done as well, You have done as well. To You be the glory, to You be the honor. Come on, worship, somebody worship. Someone worship, someone worship Him, someone glorify Him. Magnify the Lord with me, somebody. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for watching over us. Thank you, God, for embracing us. We worship you. We exalt you. What a wonderful God you are this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. the Father, you continue to bless us even as we continue with this service. In Jesus' name we pray and worship and somebody say it. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Hafananishwi na kitu kingine hafananishwi na jambo lingine yeye ni Mungu ambaye anastahili sifa. He is God who deserves all the glory. He is God who deserves all the honor. Father, we thank you for that moment of worship and praise. Father Lord, even as we settle down even to hear from you, we pray that you have your way through your word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for participating in this moment of praise and worship. I repeat, this happens to be our virtual uh, worship service. This is our virtual worship service. We are coming to you live from House of Grace Church, Eldoret. This is our link. We love God. And in the midst of everything, regardless, despite and in spite of what is happening all around the world, we still have a moment to come before God to praise Him, to praise.
like even to hear his word. And before we hear God's word, I'd want to encourage you to share this link with a few more other people. Why don't you share the link with a few more other people so that they can be part and parcel of this great service this morning. And the Lord is going to bless you. This is still the day. This is still the season the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Share the link. You can actually start a watch party using this live service feed. And God is richly going to bless you. I also want to encourage you at any given time of this service, you can give your offerings. You can pay your tithes using the pay bill that is appearing on the screen. Please do so. Have your children and have everybody settle down before we hear God's word in a short while. There is a word that is coming forth from the mouth of God. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger to deliver the word of God to you. But the word is actually coming. From God. Get ready, get ready. Pick up your Bible, pick up your pen and notebook, and get ready to hear what God has in store for us today. In the meantime, participate in every segment, participate in your giving of offerings and paying of your tithes, participate in, uh, in the hearing and taking notes and reading the word. Participate in prayer all the way to the end and God is richly going to bless you. In about 30 seconds, I'll be reading the scripture for the day, even as we get ready to hear God's word. I am excited. I am happy to be ministering to you this morning. This is the beautiful morning the Lord has given unto us to hear his word, to be blessed by his word and our lives will never ever be the same again get ready for god's word get ready pick up your bible set it down pick up your notebook and pen set it down we're just about to hear god's word and it's going to be a blessing to each one of you i am excited i am excited i am excited why don't you get ready for god's word in a minute Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Malabe Shalalabaha, Karibraha Shandalabaha, Mililiba, Sina Lalamaha, Shika Rabahazi. We bow to be blessed by the word. The word is coming forth. The word is coming forth. In a short while, we hear God's word. Prepare your heart. Prepare your mind. Sheila Hakalaba. Malima. Lusa Kotanks. For those who don't understand what language is that, that is the language of the spirit. The spiritual world has a language. The people of God, they have a special language. We call it tanks. It's the language of the spirit. I dare you to pray for one minute, even as we get ready, get ready, get ready to hear and to be blessed by the word of God. The Holy Spirit of God is the only one who can address your specific need. We are billions of people, but the Lord Almighty is so specific when it comes to addressing your need. He will address it the way you need it addressed. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. So get ready to hear his word and your life will never ever be the same again. Father, we worship. Someone to worship from wherever you are. Just worship as we get ready to read God's word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Father, for your word. Oh, thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for guidance. Thank you for inspiring somebody. Thank you for encouraging someone. Thank you, O oh God, for you're about to lift up somebody from uh, where they are to a whole new level in their lives. Thank you for breaking chains and shackles. Thank you for dismantling the works of darkness. In the name of Jesus the Christ, somebody is about to be delivered. Chains about to be broken. Fetters will be broken. In the name of Jesus, we will release the fire of the Holy Ghost and the fire of God's word to bring forth the deliverance right where you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. While we are ready to hear the word of God this morning, and the word of God is coming from the book of John, chapter number 5. If you would go there, the book of John chapter number 5 from verse number 1. That is where the word of God is coming from. From four of verses and God is going to bless us together. The Bible says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. 
and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And the Bible continues to say, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades or five porches. In this lay a multitude of invalids. The sick people were here, the blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. There is this specific man who was in this place for 38 good years. And the Bible says in verse number 6, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stalled up. And while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And the Bible continues to say, And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews say to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. The Lord bless the reading of his word. This morning, by the grace of God, I want to share with you a message that I've entitled in response to desperate situations. And as we share this, please share with other people so that they can be blessed by this message. Responding to desperate situations or in response to desperate situations. I want you to understand from the onset that we understand the works of God from the book of Genesis all the way to Revelation when we look at the interactions of the Almighty with mankind. The Bible, as I have said again and again, is the, Bible, is the book that shows the relationship between God and man. So right from the onset, at the moment God created man all the way to Revelation, it speaks about man and his relationship with God, how God interacts with man. So God interacting with man gives us an idea of how he works. You will read in the Bible and you will see right from Genesis all the way to Revelation, God desires that we understand how he works. I want to say this right here. There is a way that God works. There is a prescribed way that God works. In the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is governed by principles. The kingdom of God is governed by divine formula that God has laid down and stipulated in his word. Nothing just happens. There is something, there is a way that God works. So in the Old Testament, it is how God related with his choice servants. So we see choice servants in the Old Testament who were set apart, consecrated, called out by God. And how God relates with them, it gives us a picture. It gives us an idea. It gives us an understanding of how he works. It is when you read the Bible and listen to how God interacted with Noah that you understand how God works. That God were how God works. You read and how, how he related with Abraham and you can see how God works works. You read and understand how God interacted with Moses and the children of Israel and it gives you an idea and understanding and knowledge on how God works. There is a way that God works. My prayer for you this morning is that your eyes will be open and your mind will be open 
to the understanding of how God works. Because if you would understand how God works, our lives will become far much easier. I pray for you, even as I pray for myself, that we'll understand how God works so that we can flow with this formula, flow with these principles. And that way our lives will totally transform and change. When Christ manifested on earth in human form, when Christ put on the human garment, the fleshly government, government and walked in the face of the earth, he also interacted with us. He interacted with man. And how he interacted with man also gives us a picture on how he works and operates. There is a way, I repeat, there is a way that God works. There is a way that God operates. My prayer is that we understand how God works, how God operates. My prayer for you this morning is that you understand how God works and how God operates. One of the ways that God works is well prescribed in the verses that we have read this morning. So we see Christ appearing in a situation that was completely desperate. Jesus appears at the pool of Bethesda and when he appears here there's a desperate situation. And the Bible picks out one man, one particular man, who was by the pool for 38 good years. For 38 good years. So I want to give you a picture. I want to narrate to you and break it down for you. The situation, the environment, and how it was during this time. So this man was sick for 38 good years. Imagine with me. He was sick. He was an invalid for 38 good years. It simply means he had a desperate condition that hadn't found a cure for 38 good years. The Bible speaks about 38 good years. So he was in that condition for 1, 2, 3, 4, 35, 38 good years. Yes, same condition. And I imagine that he was looking for cure. I imagine that he was looking for help, but help was not coming his way. For that eight good years, he was a sick man. What a desperate situation and desperate condition. Many of us cannot handle a difficult situation for two years, even three years, some even for one year. We give up so easily. But this man was in the same condition, waiting for his day of miracle and breakthrough. It was a desperate situation. It was a desperate condition for 38 good years. Years. I don't know how long you've been waiting for your miracle to come. I don't know how long you've been waiting for your breakthrough to come. I don't know whether you are like this man, but I believe not. Because whatever you're going through, I don't want to imagine that it's been for 38 good years. But even if it's for 38 good years, there is a word for you. You can be in a desperate situation and condition for one year, for two years, for three years, for four years, for five years. But there is a word for you this morning. There is an answer for you this morning. You can't give up. You've come too far to give up. You've come too far to throw in the towel. You can believe God one more time. You can keep up the expectation. You can keep up the anticipation, the earnest desire for a miracle and a breakthrough to happen. You can still believe God for him to do it for you. So this man was in a desperate condition for that eight good years. It's something that was within him. The next thing you understand about this man is that he was surrounded by other invalids. He was surrounded by other sick people. The Bible says by the pool of Bethesda, which had five porches. The Bible says that there were lame, blind, and paralyzed people. So it simply means people who had other conditions also were gathered around him. So I imagine that he was desperate, but was surrounded by other desperate people. Have you ever been in a situation whereby you need help, but the people around you also need help? <laughs> I came for you this morning. You need help yourself. You desperately need help, but you're surrounded by other people who also are crying out for help. 
I came for you this morning. You see, you can be in a situation, but you're not alone. Sometimes the enemy wants you to imagine that you're by yourself, going through what you're going through by yourself. And like there is nobody else who has gone through the same thing. And like there is nobody else going through a similar thing. I came to let you know that many are the tribulations of the righteous. And so long as we are in this world, the Bible says that we'll experience tribulations, trials, and difficult moments. That is the Bible. You are not alone. You are not fighting alone. Forget about the enemy telling you that you're fighting by yourself and that your condition and your situation is unique and peculiar, that you're all by yourself. Listen, this man by the pool of Bethesda was surrounded by other people who had other conditions. They may not have been similar to his. His condition was there for 38 years, but they still had situations, they had conditions. Listen to me, child of God, your condition may not be my condition and your condition and my condition may not be your condition but we all have some sort of conditions and we all have some desperate conditions that we need the Lord to step in and perform a miracle I came for you this morning so this man was needed help was in a desperate condition but was surrounded by other desperate people desperate people who are also sick by the pool of Bethesda something else you understand about this man is that he was in a place of help but he wasn't getting help Imagine, he was in a place of help. The end of the Lord would start up the waters once. And whoever went into the pool first would be healed. So he I was actually within the vicinity of a miracle and a breakthrough. But it was not talk, taking place. You see, you can be in a place where you ought to be getting help, but you're not getting help. Have you ever gone to an office to get help? And you know that is exactly where you're supposed to get your help, but you don't get help. You can be right in a place whereby you know for sure, this is where my miracle is. This is where my answer is. This is where my solution is, but it is not coming forth. Yeah, being in the place of your miracle doesn't mean you're experiencing the miracle. I repeat, being in your place of breakthrough and in your place of miracle doesn't mean you are experiencing the miracle. You can be in a place of miracle but you are disadvantaged you can be in church for five seven ten years but you're not receiving transformation and change and miracle in your life it can happen it can happen this man was by the pool of Bethesda it was a place of refuge it was a place of healing it was a place of deliverance his condition ought to have been uh, changed and transformed but it was not happening he was in a place of miracle and the miracle was not forthcoming I came for you, child of God. You probably feel like you've been going for church 10 years, 15 years, 5 years, and change is not coming your way. Don't you dare give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You can be in a place of miracle. You can be in a place of answers and solutions, and it's not coming for the listen, child of God. Your time is coming. I repeat, your time is coming. Why don't you share this with somebody else? Share the link with somebody. Invite somebody else to be part of this great worship service and the hearing of God's word. So this man was in a desperate condition for that eight good years. This man was surrounded by other sick, miserable, desperate people. This man was in a place of help, but his help was not coming forth. I came to you, somebody. You went to work in a certain company, hoping and believing that your answer, financial answers and solutions will have come, but you're not getting those answers. You went to a church somewhere and you're believing God, anticipating, looking forward, that your condition will change overnight but it hasn't changed and it's one year down the line you are like this man who was in one place one year two years that eight good years and he was in a place of help but was not getting help something else you understand about this man is that he was so disadvantaged to the extent he says that he, he whenever the waters are stalled up he, he is not amongst the first to go in it means his condition had made him to be so disadvantaged uh, 
So compared to others, he was willing and ready, but compared to others, he was disadvantaged in some way. He was not fast enough. He, there was nobody to help him to go into the pool so that he can receive his healing. This man was disadvantaged. Something about his condition was making him slow down. Something about his condition was making him not move fast to enter into the pool. He was disadvantaged. You can be a place whereby you are totally disadvantaged. It appears everybody else is going ahead of you. Something about your condition is slowing you down. My God, my God, my God. I believe this is a word for somebody. It could be your condition is slowing you down. Whatever it is, whatever struggle it is, it could be slowing you down. You're not moving as fast as you'd wish to. Your condition is impeding your speed. You want to move faster, but you're not able to move faster. Because every time you're trying to move fast, something slows you down and pulls you back. Your condition pulls you back. Something, we are just about to enter into your miracle, into your breakthrough, but your condition slows you down down. Your condition slows you down. Whatever struggle it is, whatever pain it is, whatever sickness it is, it slows you down. You want to start ministry, but you don't start because there's something that pulls you back and slows you down. It could be a financial situation that stops you from starting that business. Your, fi your condition is financial. So anytime you want to start and venture into business, you're not able to start as quickly as you'd want to. Why? There is a financial condition that keeps on pulling you back. It could be the spirit of death. We break it today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is making you feel disadvantaged, you're disadvantaged. It could be a paper that you never completed in your academics and it slows you down. Every time you go for interviews, that question pops up and you're disqualified. You have everything else in place, but there's something, there's a condition, there's a struggle that slows you down. There is a word for you today in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a desperate condition. It's a desperate situation that is slowing you down, but the Lord is going to respond to it today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So this man was disadvantaged, disadvantaged. Something about his condition was slowing him down, impeding his speed. He was not moving as fast as the others. The other thing you see about this man is that he was in an environment whereby he was being overtaken by other people. People would come for solutions and it looks like other people would go into the pool ahead of him. So everybody seemed to be getting their miracle but him. So there was overtaking. He was being overtaken by people, by events. They would leave him the same. They would come. They would come sick, but they would get their healing and leave him in the same spot. I don't know whether I'm talking to you, whereby some people came to church after you, but they look like they're doing far much better than you. <laughs> God has a word for you. Some people started ministry way after you. But they seem to be doing far much better than you. There is a word for somebody this morning. Some people came and, uh, to church and they were single. They got married ahead of you. You are still there wondering what happened to me. There is a word for you. You can be in a place, in a condition. You are overtaken by others. You're comparing yourself with others. You're wondering, what is this wrong with me? How can I be in this condition all this while? How comes my miracle is not coming forth? There is a word for you this morning. You are like this man. This man had a desperate condition, a situation for that he ate good years. This man was surrounded by other people who would not help him. This man was in a place of help, was not getting help. This man was disadvantaged. This man was disadvantaged. There's something about his condition that was slowing him down. This man was overtaken by other people. Other people seemed to get a miracle but him. I came to talk to you. There is answer. There is an answer in God's word. Share the link with somebody. There is a word for somebody. There is an answer from God's word and from this portion of scripture. There is an answer. There is a solution from the Lord to somebody this morning. So how do you respond to such a desperate situation? How do you respond? So the Bible says Jesus appears in the scene. And Jesus appears and his target is this man. It looks like his focus is this man. 
for this man Jesus understood for he knows everything oh can I stop right there and tell you that Jesus knows everything that Jesus looked at this man and he understood that he was in that condition for that he ate good years there is nothing that is hidden from our God I repeat nothing is hidden from our God how long you've been in it how bad it has been God is aware Jesus looked at this man and he understood he'd been in this condition for that he ate good years so Jesus appears to this man and Jesus starts and initiates a conversation with a man Jesus starts to converse with a man and the man pays attention Jesus asks the man do you want to be healed and the man pays attention to Jesus and begins to respond and talk to Jesus the number one key to dealing with desperate situation is that pay attention to Christ pay attention to Christ you must pay attention to him and draw closer to him so that you can hear him you need to get closer to God you need to get closer to Christ when you're dealing with a desperate situation that is not the time to complain and to mama and to operate from a distance that is a time to draw closer to Christ Jesus this man paid attention when Jesus asked him do you want to be healed he paid attention and means he was close enough to hear his voice I dare you today to get closer to God I dare you this morning to get closer to God. Your desperate situation should not take you further from God. Rather, it should you draw you closer to God. I dare you take a step towards Christ. I dare you take a step towards God. Because your miracle is in the miracle worker. So you better draw closer to him. So he paid attention. Do you want to be healed? And he paid attention and began to converse with Jesus Christ. This morning, I dare you pay attention and draw closer to Christ I don't know whether you are experiencing distance with Christ you know right now we are talking about social distance and probably some of you because such buildings have been shut you have developed a distance with God it's a spiritual distance so you're no longer to talk to God you're no longer communing with Christ you're no longer paying attention to him I dare you this morning oh, why don't you close the gap Close that gap you have between you and God. Close the gap you have between you and Christ and pay attention to what he is saying to you. Jesus wants to say something to you, but some of us, we are too far from him. <clears throat> Jesus wants to talk to us, but some of us, we are far off. Jesus wants to talk to us. God wants to say something to us, but some of us, we are far too off. There is a gap. There is a spiritual distance. There is a spiritual distance. Why don't you close the gap? and get closer to God get closer to God by reading his word get closer to God by praying get closer to God by fellowship and worshiping and praising his holy name close the gap I dare you this morning if you want your desperate situation be responded to go down on your knees and pay attention to God look up to God from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord this morning we can draw closer we can chase after him I want to pray that God who raise chasers of God God chasers people who are pursuing God with all that they have with all that they are if you pursue God with the same enthusiasm and excitement you pursue money let me put it better if you pursue God with the same energy and drive enthusiasm you pursue, you pursue your loved ones God would show up in your life the Bible says if you draw near to me I shall draw near unto you you can draw near to God this morning you can draw nigh and when you take one step it looks like he takes five steps towards you this morning you can draw closer this man paid attention he drew closer to God draw close to God you might be having a desperate situation but it's not the time to be far from God that is the time to walk towards him to draw closer to him in prayer in worship in fellowship in reading his word in listening to messages that is the time to draw close to God when you have a desperate situation what is your spiritual distance with God what is your spiritual distance with God? Close the gap this morning. Number two key. Number two key. Number two key responding to desperate situation is don't fear to start a conversation 
with God. This man began to narrate to Christ. When Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? The man began to, uh, to uh, converse with him. The man began to have a conversation with him. Don't fear to have a conversation with Christ. Explaining to him exactly what you're going through. Listen, God is willing to hear your side of the story. God is willing to hear your side of the story. How difficult it has been. How challenging it has been. We have one who listens who has better listening skills than a man. That is the almighty God. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. You can talk to him in the night. You can talk to him in the morning. You can talk to him during the day. You can talk to him at any given time of the day. You can talk to God. You can have a conversation with God. You can tell him exactly how you're feeling. Listen, one of the most powerful prayers you can offer to God is a sincere conversation to God. Prayer is not difficult because prayer is a conversation between man and God. Prayer is not difficult and all you need to do is to converse. Just like this man began telling God, every time I want to be healed, the waters are stalled up, but I never get into the waters. Somebody else goes in ahead of me. He was conversing with Christ. He was trying to make Christ understand and his situation and his, 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 his situation and his condition. I want you to dare have a conversation with God. You have posted on Facebook. You have put it up on your state, WhatsApp status. You have put it up on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Why don't you try having a conversation with God? Some people will pretend they are paying attention to you, but they are picking up stories to share. Why don't you share your story with God? This morning, you can share your story with God. You can have a conversation with God. You can have a conversation with God. And number three key to dealing with a desperate situation is that focus on what could happen rather than what didn't happen. This man was so preoccupied with what did happen instead of paying attention on what could happen. Most of us, we are missing out because we are paying attention to what did happen rather than paying attention to what could happen. Imagine with me what could happen. If you'd believe one more time what could happen, you'd take the step the right direction. What could happen? Stop thinking about what did happen. She dropped you, he dropped you, it's okay. That is what did happen. What about what could happen? If you believe one more time, you would have faith one more time. If you take a step forward one more time. Believe God. What could happen? Not what didn't happen. Pay attention to what could happen. What could happen? If I lift up my hand and say, I want to do it one more time again. What could happen if you'd say, I'll start the business one more time? What could happen if you say, I would want to seek a relationship one more time? Forget about what didn't happen. Pay attention to what could happen. This man was preoccupied with what did happen. He wanted to have stepped into the waters, but he doesn't know what could happen if he would take serious the one who is standing before him what could happen this morning i ask you what could happen your miracle is in what can happen it's not in what didn't happen your miracle i repeat is in what can happen now it is not in what did happen your yesterday is gone today is a new day you can change your perspective you can determine and say i will focus on what can happen i will raise up my faith i will build up my anticipation i will raise up my belief i will believe god one more time mm, child of god you believe god one more time you can believe god one more time you can believe the almighty god one more time Time. One more time, my God. One more time. One more time. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. It is desperate. You probably don't have energy left, but one more time. What could happen if I believe in one more time? What could happen if I went down on my knees to pray one more time? What would happen if I lift up my hands and begin to worship and praise Him one more time? What could happen if I give one more time? What could happen if I approach the person one more time? 
time. You've got a chance to make one more move. Regardless and despite of how desperate it is, you can make one more move in the right direction. This man began to focus on what did happen, but I dare you today, focus on what can, what could happen if you make a move in the right direction. And number four key to respond to a desperate situation, you must believe what Christ is telling you. Oh my God, believe what Christ is telling you. Believe what Christ is telling you. Believe what Christ is telling you. God is saying something to you this morning. Child of God, believe what he's saying. Stop arguing with what Christ is telling you. Jesus Christ spoke to the man and told him, pick up your mat, rise up, pick up your mat and walk. He did not argue. He did not give out more theories. He picked up his mat. He rose up, picked up his mat and began to walk and began to walk. You must believe what Christ is saying to you this morning. There is something that God is saying to you. You, 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 you that is watching this and listening to me. There is something that God is saying to you. The problem with us is that we try to argue. We try to rationalize. We try to use human wisdom, human understanding so as to decide the things of God. Listen, the things of God are to be acted upon, are to be believed, not to be dissected. You don't have to dissect. You don't have to try and understand everything. Listen, child of God, you may not understand everything, but what you need to do is to believe. Believe God this morning. Believe what Christ is saying. Believe what God is saying. Some of you, the Lord is telling you that you're still the head and not the tail. You don't look like it right now, but God is saying it. God is saying that you are favored, you are accepted, you are loved, you are appreciated, but you want to argue with that message because of where you are at in the moment. Please forget about where you are in the moment. Believe what Christ is saying. God is saying, for this sake, Jesus. Jesus Christ became poor that you might be rich. But when you look at your bank account, when you look at your phone, M-Pesa, you have nothing to talk about. Listen, don't argue with your present condition. Don't give facts based on your present condition. Why don't you believe what God is saying? God is saying you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I decide, I have determined to believe that regardless of what is happening all around me. I will believe what God is saying. Believe what God is saying. Believe what Jesus Christ is saying. You are the healed and all the sick. You are healed by his traps. You are healed. You are the head and all the tail. Oh, can I declare to somebody? Let me proclaim and declare to somebody. Let me make some declaration to somebody. Let me proclaim declaration to somebody that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. That is what God is saying to you. You are lifted. The hand of God is lifting you up this morning. You are encouraged. God is encouraging you this morning. You will not die premature. You will live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Despite how desperate your condition is, there is power, wonder working power in the blood and in the name of Jesus the Christ. I came to speak to you this morning and I came to speak to your condition. I came to speak to your situation and I came to let you know there is a God in heaven who hears prayers. When you draw close closer to him, when you pay attention to him, when you start a conversation with him, when you focus on what could happen and when you believe his word, miracle signs and wonders will be your day to day experiences. That is my prayer for you. So I declare, I decree that you will experience miracle signs and wonders. Your desperate situation will come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. I don't know how long it's been there, but I believe in a God who can change a life in a moment. One moment, one encounter with God can turn your life around. I prophesy to you, I declare to you this morning, there is a turnaround in your life. It's just going to be a moment. You don't have to wait for an angel to start up the world. As Christ Jesus has already come. Christ Jesus has already come. And your situation is just about to turn out for good. This is the worst that will ever be in your life. I declare again. This is the worst that it shall ever be in your life. You will never go down beyond this point. You have hit your rock bottom. The next step that you can take is a step upward. I proclaim the word of God over your life this morning. You begin to go higher. You begin to go up. You begin to be blessed. 
Christ, you begin to manifest the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The glory of God is coming upon you, upon your children, upon your business, upon your career. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, even as desperate it might look right now, even in the nations and in the nation, in the nation and in the nations of the world, we are still conquerors in Christ Jesus. We believe in a God who is well able. Believe in Him. Trust in Him. Your desperate situation is not an end to itself. When God is by your side, he will fight your battles. He will fight your battles. The devil is a liar who is telling you that you're dying in your desperate situation. The, that devil, that old devil is a liar. We rebuke him in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we release the faith. We release the belief. We release the strength. We release the grace for you to move forward to a whole new level in God. In the mighty name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That is not your end. You might be down right now, but take up your mouth and walk. That condition, that situation is not an end to itself. So long as God is by your side, you shall overcome. You shall rise up and do it again. What could happen if you take one more step of believing God? This morning, I want you to understand there is a God in heaven. Who is able to turn your desperate situation and make it a joy in your life. Whatever you've gone through, whatever you've gone through, whatever has caused you tears, I'm here to let you know it's building up as a testimony. In the near future, you're going to testify. And many people will be encouraged by what you survived. Listen, child of God, whatever you've been going through, whatever you've gone through, is going to turn out to be a testimony and a platform for you to encourage thousands and thousands of your of people you are going to survive so that you can encourage others in the future your desperate situation your best response to a desperate situation draw close to god close the gap get closer to god get closer to god God, get close to God. Don't fear to have a conversation with God. Don't fear to have a conversation with God. Focus on what could happen. Child of God, focus on what could happen. If you believe God one more time and take a step one more time, focus on what could happen. Not what didn't happen. Focus on what could happen. Believe what Christ is saying to you this morning. Your desperate situations are going to turn around. As we sing this song, this song we're going to be singing right now, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be lifted. I want you to be inspired. Nothing, there is no situation that is permanent. Whatever it is, whoever you are, there is a God who deals with desperate situations and it's going to turn it around for you in jesus mighty name so we're going to worship with this song and i'll be coming back to pray for you but in the meantime meditate think about it think about it in jesus mighty name
just about to come to the end of our service today. But before I pray for you, I want to give you a chance to meditate on that word even as you prepare to give unto God. We want to give unto God our offerings. We want to pay our tithes. Wherever you are, from wherever you are, you can be able to participate in giving of offerings and paying of tithes. So we continue singing for another two or so minutes so that we can give you a chance to give unto God. Giving time is a blessing time and also it's a smiling time. We are a people that believe in giving towards the work of God. We don't argue about it. It's one of the ways that God works. I know people fight it, but we are not in the category and the group that fight giving. We believe in giving. We believe that God is the one who turns around our lives. He's our source. He's our supplier. And uh, there is no limit in how much God can increase and give unto our lives. Thank you so much. So I want to give a chance to give unto God as I read some of your comments. Thank you, Jerry, uh, for being part of the service. Thank you, Florence Karaoke, for being part of the service. Thank you, Brenda. God bless you. Thank you, Lena. Thank you. No permanent situation. God bless you. Give as I as I read your comments. Uh, feel free to give. You can give right now. Give your offerings. Pay your tithes. Use the pay bill appearing on the screen. As I read a few of your comments, Shepherd Gethuer. Thank you. No situation is permanent. Davis. Yes, the best is yet to come. God bless you. Uh, we will survive to testify. We will survive to testify. Thank you, Jerry. Minister Prasi, amen. I'm getting up to do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, I will survive so that I can encourage others in the future. Minister Kevin, God bless you. God bless you. Mercy Spencer, God bless you. Uh, Simeon, God bless you. Rise up and walk. Thank you, Simeon. I have faith in him. It's not an end. It's not an end. Minister Grace, amen. Uh, Lucas Mitati, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Martha Mbani, God bless you. God bless you. We can do it again. We can do it again. It's, we can do it again. Even as you give right now, you have one more minute to participate in giving. Even as we continue enjoying the music on the background. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
thank you for participating in the praise. Thank you for participating in prayer. Thank you for participating in listening God's word. We are responding to desperate situations. God has given us keys. Thank you for participating in giving and paying your tithes. God richly bless you. I want to release a prayer to you before I leave you. I want to declare a prayer over your life that God will watch over you. Why don't you stretch your hands actually? You can stretch your hands by faith as I stretch my hands towards you right now and proclaim the blessings of God. Father, in the name that is above every other name, as I stretch out my hands to your people, I want to proclaim, declare, and decree your blessings upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we believe in the power of your word and I release your word into their lives. I declare, I decree that their desperate situations have come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. I declare they are drawing closer to you in the name of Jesus the Christ. I declare they are paying attention to your words in the name of Jesus. I declare their faith is being raised in the name of Jesus the Christ. I bless your people with every spiritual blessing as proclaimed in your word. In Jesus mighty name, I call your people the head and not the tail above and not beneath. I call your people triumphant. I call your people more than conquerors. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, I call your people winners. Whatever has was tying them down is hereby broken. They are succeeding. They are moving forward with speed. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I release the grace for speedy performance over your life. In the name of Jesus the Christ, succeed in all your endeavors. Succeed in all your businesses. Succeed in your career. Succeed in your relationships. Succeed in your family. Succeed with your children. Succeed in your home. In the name of Jesus the Christ and whatever desperate situation we bring it to an end in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord cause his face to shine upon you the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and be gracious to you in your going out and in your coming in in your labors and in your leisures and in all you touch to do may you prosper even as you overcome desperate conditions and desperate situations by the grace and by the power of the most high God in Jesus name we pray and somebody said a big amen amen and amen type there amen type there amen type there amen we're gonna take it away with the song type there amen God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you thank you Phyllis God bless you Jerry, God bless you. Shepherd Rama, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So Rhoda, God bless you. So we Esther, God bless you for being part of this. Rosaline, we Kesha, God bless you. God bless you. All of you who have been part, Brenda, God bless you. All of you who have taken part in this service to make it a success. God richly bless you and do you good. So we'll sing it away. Uh, don't be quick to put off. Uh, the live just to get away with a song for a minute in Jesus mighty name we love you and we appreciate you Whilst I hear, 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 hear. 